What's going on guys, it's Lily 216 and this is episode 2 of Building the Dream Team. If you haven't seen episode 1, episode 1's in the description. But before we get down to any of the matches in this episode, there's two quick things I want to ask you. The first thing is, how would you prefer to see these matches? So would you prefer to see it like you do in the first match of this episode, where it's in more in-depth gameplay and live commentary? Or would you like to see it like the second match in this episode, where it's literally the main highlights and me voicing over it? Or would you like to see a mixer, mix of both of them? And if I do it the second way, I'm most likely fitting more matches, so it'd probably be four matches in each episode, and I can fly through the series a lot quicker and go into more seasons. The second thing I wanted to ask you guys is, I've got a vision of a team in my head which, by the time I can afford to sign in with Reading, I think most of them will be retired. So I thought if I do a Master League Online series, let's see how successful they are online, and it consists of a team with like John Terry and... Anton Ferdinand or Rio Ferdinand because you can just imagine the chemistry there and John Terry is not just a player of good chemistry he's really good at covering other players as well and we know he doesn't like to cover anyone more than he likes to cover Wayne Bridge and I'm not just talking on the pitch there I think most of you guys know exactly where I'm coming from and that's just one little area of the pitch where I'm thinking you know great chemistry great great covering but then I was thinking left mid I could go for P Patrice Evra and up front Luis Suarez because the closer you keep them guys together any good things can really happen and we all know football is at their best when they're hungry for success. And who can keep Suarez's appetite higher than Ivanovic at right back? So let me know what your thoughts are on that you know, series there in the comment section. So let's get down to this one. Match day 3 comes from the Medeski Stadium as Reading are playing host to Norwich. Reading will be looking to bounce back from their 3-2 defeat against Tottenham at White Hart Lane. And to show things up at the back, Reading have given a debut to young 19-year-old centre-back from Belgium, Anuhai. And Norwich will be looking to get their first points of the season after losing at home to Sunderland last week. And Ahula hand on the board. And he flicks it back to Snodgrass and makes his way forward as Snodgrass now looks for option. And he finds Tete, who finds him with a clever back heel. And now Housen! Oh, he's just hit it wide. Great effort as Norwich up the tempo. Camp goes long, looking for Kamara. And Kamara wins the header. And now it's Hula. Hula looks to drive and he plays a short pass to Snodgrass. It opens up for Snodgrass and it's a deflect shot and he's thrown for Harsen! Oh and that's unlucky as this time Harsen comes close and hits the post. It's an Irish throw as Kamara plays it back to Whitaker who takes a touch and whips it in and finds Pilkington who just gets too much on it and misses the target. Kelly plays it down the line and finds Gunter who finds Pagrebniak. Now Pagrebniak twisting and turning finds Lafondra. Lafondra looks up. And when he sees the run of Mackinac, he picks the ball up and looks to run out wide. And he cuts back in. And he's got very little support and tries to poke one in the far corner. Great save by Camp. Now it's behind for a corner. Mackinac running out wide. And he gives the ball away cheaply. And so does Turner. And Lafondra has the ball and he's played it back to Mackinac. Mackinac looks up and tries to play it back to Lafondra and gets cleared. And now Norwich, can they break as Hulan plays one out wide to Kamara. Kamara looks and he drives forward with the ball. And he finds Housen with a great first time little pass to Snodgrass. Snodgrass cuts it in a little bit and he curls one into the far corner. And Norwich have the lead at the Modeski Stadium. It's a well worked goal and there's a great little touch here to open up the angle for a shot. And he curls it into the far corner giving the keeper no chance. Norwich have been a much better team but I have to say there's one thing that annoys me so much. And you can tell this is a 10 year old engine and work here. And hopefully this shouldn't be the issue when... You know, the next pass comes out to the players and the shirts are now separate. So the referee should be able to pick up on this stuff. But my player has the run on him. He's faster than him. And look at this. It's just like, I don't know if he's pulling his shirt or raping him to the side. But that needs to be sorted by the next pass. But let's move on to the second half now. Look. Guthrie runs ahead of him and Mackinac controls the ball. Now he looks up for options and looks to play back to Guthrie and sold him short. Now Norwich can break as Kamara leads the counter attack. Can he get into a good crossing position? Arnie holds up and he's waiting for more teammates for this attack. And now Snodgrass to Tete. He plays it first time to Housen. Oh, and he looks for the far corner. He should have at least hit the target. Snodgrass to Housen. Housen looks and sprays one out wide to Kamara. And Kamara's getting a lot of joy down this right wing. What's he going to do? Is he going to drive it? No one's in the box yet. He holds up and waits for support. And he's got a kind ricochet. And this time he looks to drive it in. And it's well defended. Now Makinov looks to get onto the loose ball. And Reading look to counter. Makinov looks up and finds Shuri. Shuri plays it down the line to Lafondra. Lafondra looks up and plays it first time to Makinov. Makinov looks up and has a go! And it's a great save, great football all around. My team with very little threat going for, so I actually needed to like freshen up. And normally when you freshen up, you get at least one chance. 
and straight away it looked a lot more lively as Roberts ends this corner and the team start to pull forward. Pogrebna picks up the loose ball and he has a look up and he whips one into the far post oh, and that's a poor header from Tate as it falls to Hunt! Oh and Reading should be on level terms! He will hand to take the corner and he sends it to the back post as Pilkington wins the header and it's a great save he just didn't get enough power behind the header Roberts picks up the loose ball and this will be Reading's final push to get something from this game as Shorey gets the ball looks to play for it and gives the ball away cheaply to Russell Martin Russell Martin plays in Harrison can he finish the game off? and he does this 2-0 Norwich and Norwich have picked up their first 3 points of the Premier League season Norwich were good for that win but there's one thing that annoyed me and watch how Makinov goes in for the slide tackle for the second goal look how stupid it is he doesn't even go for it he kind of goes where he used to be like 10 seconds ago what's the point in that? A quick look at the other results QPR, Wigan and Sunderland lost Villa won Southampton won West Ham lost and they're the results that should basically affect me so let's see how it stands I'm basically still out of the relegation zone and Chelsea are still behind me so I'm ahead of the champions of Europe and Wigan are going to look to do the great escape again right guys I'm supposed to show you the Everton match but everyone has a newbie side whether it's when you go to toilet your feet end up getting wet and don't worry I'm cool like that my feet end up dry all the time but my newbie side shone through right here and when I started playing the Everton match I thought I hit the record button but I didn't so I'll quickly tell you what happened I basically beat Everton 2-1 and it wasn't really basic but basically they took the lead and I scored just before half time and straight after half time it was a wicked match to watch because Baines at the post right at the end chances at both ends and it was one of those nail biting finishes but moving on to the Southampton match I had a bit of a problem because when I played Everton they had a deep defensive line and here you can see Southampton their defensive line is pretty high up and they did a good job at catching me offside quite a bit and they actually played some good football themselves but their problem was their finishing was too tame and when my goalkeeper is catching your best three efforts then you know your attack's got some training to do now I think the computer actually adapted to the way you play so you have to start mixing things up and I didn't really do that straight away I was determined to you know break that offside trap with a really good pass and actually to be fair that's what manual passing lets you do it allows you to you know play more realis realistic passes and you can see here I love it when I do this when I zip one into feet and it you know just lays off nicely and here Roberts breaks away and he gets lucky rebound falls kindly back for him and he makes no mistake of the empty net and you know I've realised it was really hard to actually break that defensive line so I thought second half I've got to come out stop putting more crosses into the box and straight away I get in there on the side and keep him it's a great double save but here's when you know you can also tell a 10 year old engine's really at its limits the reality is that should have been a penalty look the defender you know he goes for the ball misses it totally hacks my player with the new engine hopefully that should be sorted and then this happens and it starts to get my blood boiling because it just really pisses me off when this happens you put so much concentration in keeping a good defensive line and a good defensive shape make sure everyone's picked up and then someone plays a pass to a striker and it literally rolls over your defender's shoelace and he still doesn't react to it look at that you know I, if I had conceded a goal there you know I would have just probably chucked my pad at my TV but then I kept going on and you know went for goal putting crosses into the box because they weren't used to seeing that from me in this match anyway and then coming in the work uh, you know some space putting a great cross and then Lafondre rises up great leap and just piles it beyond the keeper and this is what I want to see that we can be able to do post 2014 to be able to time our headers better in this it's just a bit more random and basically there you see me I'd take all three points and here's a look at the results but before I go there's one quick thing I want to say and that's Konami are doing a pre-E3 show on the 6th of June 6pm UK time so hopefully we should get some PES 2014 gameplay up by then and some news on whether it's coming on the next PS4 and, or Xbox or even PS Vita but there's one last thing regarding this Master League campaign and that's you guys can help with the transfers so you know you can give me tips on where you think my team's weak right now my team's weak as shit but once I'm able to afford you know better plays you lot can give me tips on who to sign so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you liked it remember to give it a thumbs up if you want to see more remember to subscribe and thanks for watching guys